Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am playing catch up again with my recent reads. This is numbers 61 through 70, so let's just jump right in. Number 61 is one of my favorite reads of this year. Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy and it comes right after the Farseer trilogy. I loved this book so much. We have live ships that are like sentient beings and when the owners of the ships die, their blood and their memories soak into the live ship. And so the live ships are like keepers of all this knowledge, but it's so much more than that. We get multiple points of view. There's a couple of characters in here that I just loathe with every fiber of my being, but I think that's a testament to how well Robin Hobb wrote them, that I have such strong hatred toward these people. But there's also so many wonderful characters, and this first book was just so captivating, and it kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. Another thing I just really like about this book is the city Bingtown is almost like a character in the book as well, kind of like Wuthering Heights in the book Wuthering Heights is almost a character in the story. Fantastic writing, fantastic characters. She can do no wrong. So I obviously gave it five out of five stars. Number 62 was Penne Dreadful by Catherine Bruns. This is the first book in the Italian Chef mystery series. This one was pretty good, but there was too much going on. <laughs> like, way too much. It was a very busy, cozy mystery. And it was a hair long <laughs> for everything that was going on. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. Number 63 was One Poison Pie by Lynn Cahoon. This is book number one in the Kitchen Witch Mystery series. I really enjoy this series. Lynn Cahoon is definitely one of my favorite cozy mystery authors. In this series, she does a really good job of balancing the paranormal witchy aspects with the mystery. And it's not too much paranormal, but it's enough that if you're in the mood for that, it'd be a good book to gravitate toward. So I gave that one four out of five stars. Number 64 was Till Death Do Us Tart by Ellie Alexander. Number eight in the Bake Shop Mystery Series. Ellie Alexander is my favorite cozy mystery author. It's set in Ashland, Oregon, takes place at a bake shop called Tort, run by a mother and daughter, and it's so good. I gave it five out of five stars. Number six was The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This was a book club pick for The Space Sirens. I really enjoyed this. I didn't really know what to think, but it's a really gripping YA fantasy. The magic system is really cool. I haven't seen anything like it. My one con is I wasn't a fan of the romance. I think the book would have been fine without it, but I read it super fast and I was hooked the whole time. So four out of five stars. Number 66 was The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This was a mystery thriller and I did enjoy it and I was hooked because I wanted to know the mystery uh, surrounding these dead girls that were found. It was good. I just didn't really connect with the story or the characters, which is what took away from my enjoyment. So I gave that one 3.5 out of 5 stars. Number 67 was Carbs and Cadavers by Ellery Adams and J.B. Stanley. This is the first book in the Supper Club mystery series. And <laughs> it's about these five people who come together because they all want to lose weight and they call themselves the Flab Five, which I thought was adorable. <laughs> and it's just a really fun, cozy mystery. I gave it 3.5 out of five stars. Number 68, The Marsh Madness 
by Victoria Abbott. This was book four in the Book Collector Cozy Mystery series. It was okay. It was pretty good. Just your standard cozy mystery. Find a body. Get involved. Help solve the mystery. Quirky characters. Three stars. Number 69, Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Siji and translated by Ina Rilke. This was um, a translated book from China and it was pretty good. I honestly thought I would like it more than I would or more than I did. <laughs> the writing is really lovely and the plot is good. I just didn't connect with the characters and there was just something missing and I can't really tell you what that is but something's not there. <laughs> so I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. And number 70 is Silk by Alessandro Barico, translated by Guido Waldman. This is a historical translated work from, I believe, Italy. And this one was really lovely. The writing was beautiful and it almost feels like someone is telling you the story like in an oral tradition and it takes place in Italy and I believe Japan. It's just really good and it's about silk and getting silkworms and the dangers and all that but there's just so much more and there's a love story involved and I read this almost in one sitting. It was so good. So I gave that one four stars. So those are my recent reads. Have you read any of these? If so, please let me know down below and tell me what you thought. And if you've made it this far, but you don't have anything to add, drop some kind of baking emoji down below, be it a utensil or food, what have you. As always, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button down below. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.